Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Ala's World of Finance and welcome to Stock Market Daily. So I hope you're all having a fantastic day. We just got a couple of things to talk about today. We're going to talk. Well, today's the last day of the first half of the year and we're going into the second half of the year. So we're going to talk a little bit about how we've performed so far and how we'll be doing in the second half of the year. We'll also talk a little bit about Tesla and China because there's some stuff going on with the lithium ion battery market. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. And finally, I just want to kind of briefly touch up on some bank stuff, some bank stocks, and I'll just kind of mention that at the end. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. So we're looking at the markets. It's been kind of a standard day today. There's still a little bit of time left in after hours trading, but the Dow Jones is up 0.29%. The NASDAQ is actually down 0.06%, the tech heavy NASDAQ, unfortunately, and S&P 500 is up 0.15%. Now when looking at the sectors, uh, what helped the markets the most today was the industrials and consumer discretionary sectors. Industrials leading the pack at 0.76%. Energy bounced back a little bit, 0.37%. Financials is down just slightly, 0.06%. And then the tech sector down again, almost at the bottom, but second from the bottom at 0.11% down today. Okay, so today's the first. Uh, today's the last day of the first half of the year. So how have we done so far? We've actually done very well. So the the Dow Jones is up 7.7% from the beginning of the year going through Thursday, up 7.7%. The S&P 500 is up 8%. And then my favorite, the tech heavy NASDAQ, up over 14%. So a massive amount for the NASDAQ. And that's obviously led to a lot of talks about the tech sector being really overvalued and stuff like that. And some transition from growth stocks into value stocks like bank stocks and things like that. Okay, so how will we do in the second half of the year? Well, if we look at the past two decades, we've actually done very well in the uh, second half of the year. And what has done the best is actually the tech sector. So the tech sector has performed the best and then healthcare and consumer discretionary also did well. And then energy was kind of lagging behind. Now, because the tech sector did so well, the NASDAQ was actually the best performing index as well. So having said that, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, that there's a lot of overvalued talks and stuff like that going on with the tech sector. So will they do really well again in this second half of the year? Probably not, but I'm still not backing down from some of my favorite stocks. Like for example, AMD, I'm definitely not backing down on that. I think there is still some potential left for the second half of the year even. So we'll just have to kind of keep an eye on it. But just for reference, the tech sector traded positively 75% of the time in the last two decades, second half of the year. And that was with average gains of 4.5%. So they did very well. But also keep in mind that generally stocks tend to suffer, you know, in the third quarter, but then they usually make up for that in the fourth quarter. So just kind of keep that in mind. Okay. Now let's talk about Tesla and China. So I want to talk about Tesla really quick because we know that Tesla is trying to finish their battery factory in Nevada in the desert. Well, Chinese companies are trying to are expanding their factories, their battery factories, and they're looking to produce more than 120 gigawatt hours a year by 2021. In other words, enough to supply 1.5 million Tesla Model S cars or 13.7 million Toyota Prius plugins. So in comparison, Tesla's Gigafactory will only produce around 35 gigawatt hours annually. Uh, um, and so that's basically 120 compared to 35. Now, obviously, we're comparing China to Tesla, so that's not a, like a fair comparison. But Tesla is also doing some other things that should help them out a lot as well. So they have plans to build four new factories by 2018, and they're also looking at a site in Shanghai. Now, why is this important or why does this matter? Why are we talking about it? So the reason that it's important is because the, the, the forecast for the demand of lithium ion batteries is set to explode in the next five years. And we know that generally lithium ion batteries have been used for computers, you know, uh, laptops, tablets, smartphones, other personal electronics, but it's looking like electric vehicles and power companies that install giant storage systems, those are going to be surpassing. Those are going to go way up, especially electric vehicles in the next five years. So we're looking at the market really exploding and just growing um, by a huge amount. So because it's a huge market, China wants to play a really big role in it. In fact, China actually dominates already with around 55% of lithium ion battery production. For comparison, USA is only at 10%, so 55 to 10 and by 2021, it's expected that China's stake in the market will rise to 65%. And it's because China's doing a lot of things. So right now, China uses a lot of 
a, a lot of like individual factories, like dozens of factories. And well, one report I was reading referred to it as like a constellation, but they use these other factories to basically produce all these lithium ion batteries. But China is actually, because they want to continue to dominate and because they want to increase their market stake, they're actually looking to consolidate a lot of these markets to be even more dominant. So it's kind of a big deal. Now, how do, how will this affect Tesla? So it, it may sound like I'm like making a bearish case on Tesla, but I'm actually not. I, I think it's really good that Tesla is going to be in this market and that they're really trying to compete in it because we're seeing that the market is going to explode. And we've seen in the past that you don't need to dominate a market to be successful. People, people may make fun of me all the time for investing in AMD and they're like, oh, AMD will never dominate these markets and blah, you know, whatever. But they don't understand that AMD doesn't have to dominate those markets. They just need to be competitive and steal some of the market share and things like that. And if Tesla does that and Tesla looks like they are doing it and they will do it. So I think that it will be great for Tesla. It's just another way to generate more revenue and stuff like that. So anyway, I see it as a good thing for Tesla. I, you know, I, I like Tesla. I'm not invested in Tesla, but I do like them. So anyway, that's, uh, I just want to talk about that really quick. So the last thing that I want to mention really quickly, I just want to clarify something about bank stocks. Cause in a previous video, I mentioned that, you know, bank stocks are value stocks. I kind of say that a lot and I got some comments on it. So I just kind of want to clarify. So I consider bank stocks value stocks and a lot of investors and analysts consider them value stocks as well because a lot of investors and analysts are still seeing bank stocks as coming off from the bottom and we know that a lot of these bank stocks they can't they're not really in growth territory yet because if you exceed 10 percent of the u.s banking deposit then by law you can't make additional acquisitions of other commercial banks so that kind of limits your growth so they're they're more they're more like value stocks but they they can still have they can still do some growth stuff later on of course there's there's lots of things that they can do so but we're just not quite there yet we're more in value territory and so that's kind of why you're seeing a lot of investors shifting from growth stocks, you know, like the tech sector into value stocks like bank stocks. Okay, so I just kind of wanted to clarify that because some people were asking about it. So anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, tomorrow I should have the video up for the three stocks that I'm investing in for July. I'll go ahead and tell you right now, it's gonna be the same ones. Cause I, I don't really believe in like, you know, throwing other stocks in there just, just because, you know, or just because like I wanna give you guys other stocks. Um, I, I want to tell you guys the stocks that I'm actually investing in. So that would be Nintendo, AMD, and, Di and Disney. Those are still like my favorite stocks. There is one more that's kind of floating in my head and I might mention it, but um, those are generally the three stocks that I'm investing in the most. So we'll just have, we'll have a fun video. We'll get deep into those stocks and we'll talk about it and stuff. So anyway, that is pretty much it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you're new, please subscribe. If you like the video, please hit the like button. That really helps me out the most. And um, if you are investing in any bank stocks, anything like that, you want to talk about anything, make sure you leave a comment or Tesla as well if you want to talk about that. And if you watch the video all the way through to this very moment in time, then you are today, you're probably, I don't know, you're, well, maybe you're China. China's like 65% dominance in the lithium ion battery by 2021. So, or maybe you're Tesla, maybe you're like going up against Goliath. Maybe you're going to do very well. So anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. And I hope that you all have a wonderful, beautiful day. Take care.